So we sell a lot of these little simple black leather masks. And they're very easy to make. You just use about four to five ounce leather. Mark the shape that uh, we've got a pattern piece already made up. This particular pattern piece, I cut them out of uh, linoleum scraps. I found it about the best thing to make patterns out of. It's soft and flexible like the leather. And thick enough that you don't run over it whenever you're trying to trace around it. So once we got the rough shape, we'll kind of follow the lines and cut it close. We do sometimes also cut a lot of these out with shears instead of the round knife like this, but um, I had one of them I needed to fill in order. For some reason our inventory wound up off and we needed one more. And I punch the holes for where the lace is going to be and also I use um, where the eyes on each end of the eye holes are going to be. And I make the cuts in four separate cuts basically from each hole. Once it's cut out, we'll go over it with the edge beveler, front and back, all the way around the edges, inside the eyes and everything. Be bevel all those edges so that we can smooth it out, round it up a little bit, because this mask will hopefully be on somebody's face, and you don't want a rough edge that makes them feel uncomfortable. different edge bell for to get into the tighter corners. mask form, which is just a plastic mask form I uh, bought at a hobby shop, and then I taped over the eyes and filled it up with plaster of Paris to make it solid. And I'm just wetting the piece of leather down and I'm going to shape it to that mask form, which is at least close to the shape of a human face. So obviously the masks are not going to fit everybody exactly the same. The leather does shape and move after somebody wears it. And once you wet the leather down, it's a pretty simple task to just press down on the leather and pinch it in places and hold it over the bridge of the nose and kind of smooth it down. Four to five ounce leather moves pretty easily when you're shaping it. Now I'm going to smooth up the edges just a little bit with the edge burnisher. you got to be careful not to lose your shape that you just put on it. You could smooth it ahead of time before you um, shape it on the mask form. And it's probably an easier way to do it. Kind of all depends on how much you remember to get that step done ahead of time. Give it a little bit more squish to make sure I didn't lose any of the shape. And 
once it's dried a little bit, we're going to take it downstairs and I'm going to use an airbrush to um, paint it with acrylics, basically. Um, you could use dyes on this or stains, but again, hopefully this is going to wind up on someone's face and they're going to wear it. And acrylics don't tend to bleed off, whereas a dye might. So, since we don't want somebody complaining about us giving them raccoon eyes from the mask, we like to use the acrylics for most of the masks we make for painting them. And the airbrush is just the fastest way to do it. You can also just brush on acrylic paints with a regular paintbrush you want, or paint it up any which different way. Now, I didn't show it, but we'll also uh, spray a clear coat finish on there. We really like the leather sheen spray by uh, Five Inks for that. But our last step is to just put some laces through it, and we just take and slip the one end of the lace, make a slit about uh, three eighths of an inch long. That's about a quarter of an inch in from the end of the lace. And then we're just going to pull the other end of the lace through that slit. Until it snugs up tight. And we'll do that on both sides with a piece of lace about... Oh, 18 inches long. Or so, 16, 18 inches long. On each side. Same thing with the lace piece for the other hole. See, I just kind of fold the end of the lace over there and nip it with the scissors to get the slit in it. it all down tight just like before and there we go a simple leather mask